Hi and welcome to part 5 in module 1. In this section we'll be looking at the public and private healthcare systems in Australia. So in Australia the healthcare system involves a very complex financing structure that includes provision of services through both the public and private sectors. This section will highlight the differences between these two sectors and their essential components. Let's take a look first at the public health system. Your first task is to read Chapter 3 from the Department of Health and Ageing Primary Healthcare in Australia History. Once you've done that, what I'd like you to do is draw a timeline or construct a table to display the principal dates and services from Medicare introduction in 1984 and any related Commonwealth initiatives that were developed after the initial introduction of Medicare funding. Cross-check against your team members to make sure that you've uh, adequately described the, your timeline or your table. Now that you have a bit of an understanding of Medicare funding, let's take a look specifically at ophthalmology, orthoptics and hospital payment methods in the public sector. There are a number of Medicare benefit scheme or MBS item numbers related to eye health care services or specifically to ophthalmology services in which orthoptists are involved. The next task will help you to find out more about these items and you will look at one specific example, perimetry or visual field testing, to review how Medicare may influence clinical services. Here is your task. Open the scheduled fees website for the Medicare Benefits Scheme, MBS, for services provided within ophthalmology and copy or have a look at the eye-related fees from the Category 2 and 3 documents. Then I'd like you to answer the following questions. 1. How does the Medicare rebate for perimetry measurements affect timing of these procedures? Are there any clinical ramifications for this? Two. Are ophthalmologists able to expect rebates from any procedure they choose to perform? 3. What do the different percentages of rebate indicate? Fee, benefit 75%, benefit 85%. And 4. For item number 42702, lens extraction and insertion of artificial lens, there is an extended Medicare safety net cap or EMSN. What does this mean? Make sure you are accessing the latest MBS schedule. Check the date at the bottom of the website page. Um, you should see the date and make sure that it's the current or the most recent document. Also, check in with the rest of your team to compare your responses. Let's have a look now at orthoptic services. As allied health practitioners, orthoptists may charge a fee for service. Note that this generally relates to individuals who work independently or in a clinic where the patient is not reviewed by an ophthalmologist in addition to the orthoptist. Your next task relates to Medicare item numbers for orthoptists. Can orthoptic patients receive rebates from Medicare for services provided? What I'd like you to do is explore the Better Start initiative webpage in order to answer this question. Work with your teammates and on this slide, the link for the Better Start Initiative website is shown, but you'll also be able to access it from LMS. Let's now consider hospital payment models and the orthoptist. Hospitals account for approximately 40% of Australia's health expenditure, and there is considerable policy focus on how hospitals are funded. Services provided by hospitals are generally funded on the basis of what they do, their activity, and the model of which can vary from state to state. In Victoria, specifically, we utilise a systematic approach for patients receiving outpatient services called the Victorian Ambulatory Classification System, or VACS and a number of different classification systems for other activities, for example, emergency consultations, surgery, and so on. In Victoria, you'll often uh, hear 
the VAX system referred to if you're if as the model of funding if you're working in a public hospital and the orthoptic consultation is classified as VAX 609 under other other allied health services what i'd like you to do for the task is firstly check if this item is weighted and what that means and then two determine the funding in dollars per service provided by the government for an orthoptic consultation under VAX Allied Health Services Grant. Now that you've familiarised yourself with the public health system and you've completed the three tasks related to that uh, public health system, we're going to think about the opposite, the private health system. And here is task one. Health insurance provides Australians with additional funding for their choice of health care provision in addition to the public health system. It is a choice made to enable people to have greater flexibility for their decisions of when, where and by whom their hospital and medical services will be delivered. What I'd like you to do is consider these questions related to the private healthcare system. One, what are the advantages and disadvantages of choosing to invest in health insurance? Two, how might privately insured patients influence demands on public hospitals? And three, according to Duckett and Wilcox, the Rudd government was unable to remove some of the incentives for rebates to people who chose to invest in private health insurance. How could a change in the rebate offered affect the number of people choosing to invest in private health insurance? When you're considering your answers, think about your own personal situation and whether or not you have private health insurance and what this means for you. If you can't relate this to yourself, if you've been lucky enough not to get sick, for example, think about a family member or a friend that it could apply to. And of course, as always, discuss with your group. Now that you've started to consider the private health system, I have a second task for you. What I'd like you to do is read the newspaper article by Dunleavy, which is entitled Private Health Means Test Approved File from the Australian. The questions related to this article are, how could this legislative change affect people's decision to invest in private health insurance? What influence could this have on demands for public hospital services? And two, this legislation has been secured by an agreement with the Greens Party with a pledge to invest $165 million in public dental care. How will this additional funding influence equity for public dental services? And your final task, task three for this section, uh, is that I'd like you to check the Medibank web website in order to answer this question. Hint, don't just look at the first list you come across, read further down the page. Now the question is, can orthoptic patients receive rebates from private health insurers for services provided? You might at some point want to start up your own orthoptic practice, specialising in treating amblyopia or strabismus or seeing patients for low vision consultations. Understanding the health system is essential groundwork for this. In the next and final section for Module 1, we will be discussing healthcare reform.